Hey everyone, Teresa Gregorio here for the Petite Project, and it's June, which means we are right in the middle of talking about um, really practical things, looking at our bodies, looking at our fit preferences, all with the goal of figuring out whatever that gap is between the way we're shaped and the way that the pattern assumes that we're shaped. So this week, I'm introducing the topic of looking at your variety of modifications, things that you are interested in considering and changing, and uh, and what that gap is, and so sort of steps that we take to figure that out. So in May, we were looking at diagnosing some fit issues, so um, drawing on our own expertise and experience in looking at how clothes fit us, either from the store or things that we've made, and, uh, and the different ways that it sits on your body, or wrinkles, or pulls, or... Uh, and what that means, uh, where the issue lies, and why it might be wrinkling or pulling. In June, we're going to start looking again at our bodies and what the gap is. And as you can imagine, this is a huge topic. Everyone is going to be different. Your personal variety of modifications are going to be different from everybody else's. We're all shaped differently. We all change over time. So I want to introduce that idea by encouraging all of us to do a couple of things for the rest of June. So the first thing that I want to encourage us all to do is to um, pick out a sweater pattern. This can be something that you've already knit or something that maybe you haven't knit yet because we're going to use this sweater pattern to think a little bit more and very practically about how we're shaped, uh, like what our numbers are uh, for the different measurements of our body, and what this pattern assumes that body is. Now this pattern will speak for itself, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that it's exactly what every other pattern is going to give you, but it at least will give you a taste of what you've learned uh, about your shape and what at least this knitting pattern and perhaps others presume that your shape is, so that next time when you move into selecting a pattern, you can be armed with ideas of what that pattern may assume your shape is, so that, um, especially with knitting, you kind of have to know what you want to change before you charge in, otherwise you've knit yourself a whole sweater and you've got to frog all, most part of it back to, to change something to your preference. Some people are okay with frogging me. I like to avoid it as much as possible. So using this pattern that we picked, this sweater design, uh, for the rest of June we're going to use it as a bit of a template to be very practical about uh, our shape, size, numbers, and what that pattern assumes. So go ahead and pick that. Uh, joining the conversation very specifically in the Knit Petite Project Ravelry group, but on the blog I'll be giving my own example as, as a, as a real-life example template for you to look at and compare to, but it's always good to have that conversation sort of in person uh, in a forum online. So that's the first thing I want to ask you to do pick a sweater pattern. The next thing that I'm going to encourage you to do, you may not be interested or able or wanting to do this, but um, one thing that I found personally very useful was to make a body graph and the way that that is done, it's outlined in this book which I've referenced before, Fit for Real People, and um, I don't tend to spend a lot of money on books, so I will tell you that this wasn't, it wasn't that expensive. Um, it is a sewing book but I've already, as, as you've heard, I've already drawn on it to talk a little bit about diagnosing fit issues. It's really good at um, showing real people and the way they're shaped, encouraging you to feel absolutely fine about being different from everybody else, being different from whatever the pattern, in this case sewing, in our case knitting, says. Um, and like I said, it's got this body graph information in it. And what this body graph is, is very... Uh, very literally a tracing of the outline of your body and you might think that's a bit silly but it actually gives a lot of very interesting information and the ability to be a little bit more objective about something that we're otherwise very subjective about and that's our body shape. We all have a narrative in our head, uh, an idea in our mind of uh, how we're shaped and what we feel about that, um, whether that is accurate or not to you know the actual shape of our body we would see if you ended up doing a body graph, it could give you that information. It could also give you information particularly about some lengths and proportions, things that are going to help you make some decisions about your taste and preferences, things like that, aesthetics, a conversation we may get in a little bit later in the Nip Petit Project when we talk about um, things that are flattering, which I talked about before about being very subjective. 
it also will tell you a little bit about, like I said, proportions. So we talked a lot about being short-waisted or having sloping shoulders or having um, different uh, lengths of your body that combine to create whatever your height is. And this will help you to look at that a little bit more objectively. It's kind of hard to eyeball when you're looking in a mirror if you're short-waisted or long-waisted or whatever the case may be. Um, even if you have a photograph of yourself and you look at it that way, um, the body graph I found very useful in being a little objective about that. So I'd encourage you to make it, and um, you could do it on your own, but this book is really helpful in creating it, but also interpreting it. So it gives you the information about, um, you know, if this line is above or below your uh, hip line, then it means you are long-waisted or short-waisted. If this slope is more than two inches, then it means that your shoulders are sloped more than the pattern assumes, etc., etc. So that's the second thing I'm going to encourage you to do. If you can, um, go to your library. Maybe you can get a copy or purchase a copy of, of this book, Fit for Real People. And uh, I go through the pages that are of use to us very specifically for the body graph in this week's post. So check that out. Consider that. And if you would like to, that is the question for the week. If you would like to create the body graph please hop on over to the Canary Knits Ravelry group. I want this to be a very active place where we all talk to each other in an open and very non-judgmental, body-positive way about um, these sorts of things exactly. So trying to look at this information objectively because it's going to be the basis of figuring out that gap. It's the basis of figuring out the gap between the shape that we are and the shape that a pattern assumes we are and the decision of what numbers we want to change and how we change them. I hope that all makes sense. It's a lot of dense information, but it's really kind of fun and quite practical. The only other thing that I want to throw out there at you about this week's post is I have tried, I had these grand notions of uploading a fillable PDF, but I don't think it worked, but um, I've tried to add a very brief PDF there so that you can download print off and it asks you a few questions about fit preference. So this is that subjective thing, that taste thing that uh, is going to ask you a little bit about um, the way that you like things to fit you so that it's not just a narrative in your head, it's something you've actually put on paper and thought about. I found that process to be really useful because sometimes I think that I like certain things, uh, but then when I actually sit down and ask myself, well, what do I wear every day? What sorts of sleeves do I actually like, what um, length of sleeve neckline, things like that. Uh, sometimes reality doesn't match up with what we presume, the, the story that we run in the, our head about ourselves. So I encourage you to download that too. It's up there. Hopefully it's functioning well for you. And um, that about wraps it up for this week, the introduction to uh, June tactics to petiting your knits. So like I said, it's a big topic. It's going to be um, something that we all have to do ourselves, looking at the evidence our body gives us, very hands-on kind of way. And this is exactly the moment where we can uh, very much, it would be very beneficial for all of us to talk with each other on the Ravelry forums, because that way um, we can be specific about our shapes and what we think the uh, issue might be, and then the ways to uh, remedy that. The next three weeks in June, remember, we'll be looking at that sweater pattern that you've picked. Uh, I'm going to pick one for myself and go through that with everybody as well so that we can um, perhaps generate certain um, guidelines, let's say, to choosing patterns, uh, picking things that are difficult or maybe avoiding things that are difficult to modify, and looking at the, uh, the literal spaces, areas within a sweater that are easy or difficult to modify, and then perhaps the things that you can do to modify them. Big things happening in June. Uh, again, I encourage you to pick up this book if you can. I will put a link for it in the description below. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning into the Nip Tea Project. It's uh, been a very fun-filled year already for me. I look forward to working very practically with you now for the next few weeks uh, about your own numbers and your own preferences and the things that you want to knit moving forward. So as always, if you have questions, please let me know. You can find me pretty much everywhere as Canary Knits. I want to continue the conversation with you as much as I possibly can. And I look forward to speaking with you next week and all the rest of the weeks of this year about fitting knits for our own petite bodies. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>